going to formally introduce Matthias Krasowski. Yeah, kind of. Kind of. I'm terrible at pronunciation. I'm sorry. Rubbish English person saying names wrong. Um, and we're going to talk about how to benefit from the present and future of App Store Search. There you um, go. Thank you very much. Um, so um, Eric Goldberg uh, asked me to deliver the goods up front. So there will be two, t two key takeaways from us. The first one is about uh, the app search patterns of the consumers out there. And the big takeaway for you gaming guys is, is that you have a very, pretty much every one of you have a very wrong con uh, conception of what a brand in, in mobile app search is. My, this is the, from, from our perspective, this is the time where your mom and dad gets an iPhone or an Android phone and they basically don't know any of the brands out there. So for us, for example, we already hardly see any search queries for titles like Temple Run, which are considered uh, brands in the gaming industry, but in our search is they aren't to the mobile consumer. So that's part number one. We'll talk a lot about like, what type of queries people do. The second part is uh, we are not an app store search optimization provider. I'm not selling you anything. <laughs> I don't offer you any services. But uh, we asked all the leading providers to give us their opinions on, on, on what we're going to pr uh, present here. So maybe you, know, you can trust us what we're really saying. <laughs> um, awesome. So why is this search thing important? Um, like yesterday on the user acquisition panel, there was like a little bit doubt that app search is important. And like, to, like here's, here's my like, bottom-up numbers, which I, know, which I have basically from conversations with some of the leading internet companies. Like, if we do right, 3.5 billion downloads in, in December, or four, something like this, somewhere around this, then my, my hunch is that it's at least 1.5 billion of these are through searches. And I defined it as really the user going into the search box on the Apple App Store or Google Play and starting to type, right? Um, now, like this Nielsen study is like from 2011 and they were saying like 60%, right? Maybe it's not, but like I think if, if, if you agree, like, you know, let's, let's put the number somewhere between a third and 60%. The, the other thing which you may take away is like circumstantial evidence. Like I have multiple friends who went to the Canadian app store and basically resubmitted their Android app every day, uh, like Google Play, right? And, uh, and like the biggest uplift, which I heard about, is two million, right, from zero to zero. So like there's a lot, and there's a lot of stories like that. And I think I talked to some, like uh, according to the providers, like an average uplift is like 30 to 50 thousand downloads extra through changing titles and descriptions. Either way, I think the, like what what what, our opinion about this is. That, and the industry is that the, this age of the indie developer in mobile is already over. Like, you know, people here on these panels are always talking about like how the number of downloads is rising and how the number of devices is rising. Yes, they do. But compared to last year, like the chances of you getting into the top list have, de have decreased by half and, and above that, despite of the uh, um, optimization as um, shown by AL, right? <coughs> And this is the reason, right? The reasons are top lists, right? People are really picking up, picking up the apps and games which are in this top list. And, and there's really not much else which is doing. And we think this is a huge problem. And this problem leads to this. <laughs> Very few people get a lot of downloads. And now, so why are we here? You know, like, what's, what's our take on here? And what can you get out of this? So this is me, I'm a co-founder at Xile, and I've been doing a lot of PM jobs and, and, and like, um, in both mobile and digital. Uh, I, ran, I, I was basically a PM at Admog's largest publisher in 2007. In the US, that makes me old school. In Europe, that makes me middle school. Um, and, and I think, in my view, this is already like the three, third like, wave of user acquisition which I'm witnessing. And what we are trying to be is the fourth, right? We are the first um, investment by Rick Thompson, Signia, Signia in Europe, uh, and also Klaus Kersting uh, has invested in us. So we have a lot of gaming investors in us 
who are keen to, to help us to become a part of the fourth wave. Uh, this is where we are with the company. We bootstrapped for a long time, and then we announced some of our data in, in, in December. Uh, and we also announced that uh, Nokia is um, um, promoting us in 14 languages worldwide, and a couple of these brands. And like with, uh, with the technology we've built, we have a very, very different curve, right? So in our case, 75% of all people get 90% of the downloads. So why is that? I will just do this in 30 seconds. We, for example, have, uh, referring to the Amazon thing, we have a technology which basically identifies clusters of apps and games. And so we're, we've gone beyond the native categories of by Apple and Google, or like 30 of them, and in our case, we have like more than 800, which, is our, which our index is picking up naturally. So, but that was all of the safe speech you will hear from me. <laughs> I'll go back to trying to provide you value and talk about this. So looking from our angle, right, which this is much more granular angle of these game interests, like the blue ones are the one which have particular attraction and the red ones are basically the number of apps, right? So this is where the magic is happening right now for you guys, according to what we see, not only with us, but also uh, with our partners. This is where you guys are getting killed. <laughs> and, and I said, our, what we're trying to do is to, to improve all of that. So what to do about it? Like, right, I, I'm trying to be the neutral voice on, on ESO, right? Generally, like, App Store optimization is about increasing traffic, inc increasing conversion, and um, and I think the takeaway here from Tomas, he's the CEO of AppCodes, is these are the really super early days of ASA, right? So think of these tools which are out there as like very first simple tools. And like everybody said, is like if you're an Indi guy, this is your way how possibly, you know, to, 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 to get some effect with, with, little, with little dollars or euros. So how do I def de define it? I, I'm very pragmatical, right? I'm, I'm a product manager, right? So I had to have to do stuff. So basically <laughs> define ASO as all the tools which you can use uh, to, to help to, 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 to get better here. And I'm going to walk you through each of these and explain you what to look for and what works and what doesn't. This is the geeky version of that. If you, have, if you want to geek around about this, um, talk to me after the presentation. Um, I'll add two things. This Google Plus thing, which, which Google Play is already talking about, to us it's a trial. We talk about having like third party signals as affecting the ranking. To us it's still, not, it's still super early days for that. Um, the second thing which we are seeing is like, you know, Sarah Paris from TechCrunch has written about, uh, about Apple buying Chomp and what the possible effects are. Um, like most of the trials which she reported on are over and, and Apple has not really done much about them so far. But what we're seeing right now is a new age of search bots. Like there's a couple of big names out there who are buying bots which are simulating search, right? So for example, racing games plus name of, of a brand or, or a title and then uh, press install. And uh, this is like this machine learning technology, which we are also partly using on, on our side. And what, because uh, what Apple is trying to do is to figure out that if a lot of people are using this type of queries, you know, to bump these up to the race, to, in, the, in, the, in the rankings. But they are, as I said, we are trialing that. It's, it's, it we'll see whether this will be going on the next couple of weeks. So let's jump into this uh, one by one. I think the most single thing is the title. And like big thing which, which has been happening la lately, and I suggest like if any of you guys have you know, like iTunes open, just press, like just put in racing games. And what you'll see is, for example, you see these guys bike race free by top free games on top in pretty much every territory. This is like a poster, bo poster book uh, example of how to game the, the system, right? Um, because 
this type of queries are really, really big out there, or people putting it not only in wiki, but they also put lyrics on it. So Sarah was talking about that actually like in the results, right, you really don't see much of the titles, right? But in the search, you'll, you really do, do, do see that and it's very, very significant. The app description is next thing. Like here, like think about the fir first two, three lines, your two, three statements. And, and right, like here, FIFA, manage your dream squad, right? Da 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 da, couple of names. It's, it, that's pretty good. What's not good is, is, and a lot of people do that, especially in gaming, is they brag about how, what awards they won, how many times they were in the top charts. And, and this is really, like, really, really wasted space. And, and that's not only me thinking, that's also like Patrick from, from Mobile Dev HQ. Now, once people see your apps, right, maybe some of you have really put racing games into, in, into apps, into the app store right now, as I suggested. Really, users don't have a clue what a good app is once they've done a search. Like, the average rating of an app is basically 3.8. <laughs> so, in the, in the stars, it's really the 4, <laughs> right? And, and then the results look pretty much the same, right? So, so they, these are not really, really working. Um, then, basically, as, as I suggested, like, internal and external reviews are, are, are getting mo much more game, and they're becoming really re much more important. I think you have a couple of pointers here. App icon. I'm not sure how many people open up racing games, but like, for example, in racing games, like, every, like for, and I want you really to think about this from a consumer perspective. Like the racing game is like there's a, the prototype logo there. It's the hood of a car, like from from a diagonal perspective. For most of the users, these apps and games really look pretty much the same. But apart from that, do not use words, right? Do not use standard gloss. Keep it simple and clean, consi and consistent with the app, right? So if you have a look and feel in the logo, have it also in the app. This is a pretty good. Um, description on, on where like on what to look for there and and this presentation by the way is up on SlideShare. Screenshots. Well I suggested before that ratings aren't any good. This makes the screenshot particularly important. Right? And that's where what, what all the also guys and not only us agree on that, but also the ESO guys. Really, really, really puts effort into the screenshots and explain in, in, in the screenshots what your game does straight away. So coming to the last point, to the, to the keyword, what's a perfect keyword, right? And like to, to Niren from, from SearchMed, right? He tries to uh, tell his clients to come up with like two, two, two word, three word um, keywords and optimize for that. So not optimize for poker, but you know, like uh, some something else which has poker in it, right? And li I like poker casino in that case, and that's probably the, the way to go for most of the indie developers. That's that's another um, slide from from Niren, and he thinks like that because like the web has been working like this. Um, app search will be, behave like this as well, and he really, really advises for the long-term one, for the long-term keywords. And this is what we see. And what I will be doing is like after explaining to you all the like the four types of keywords and their popularity, so you really understand really what what this is about. I come to that in a second. The first one is the brand query, and this really gets me to the initial statement. We really see, like, and we already have, for Europe, Europe we have really significant traffic, and we're, we're like, if you want to think about us, we give you free downloads right now, right? We are not selling advertising, we, and we already have pretty much significant traffic if you compare us to, to other download sources. So, um, basically only Angry Birds and FIFA, right, are here. Already with Temple Run, it's, it's like probably a fifth of what Angry Birds does, <laughs> right? 
there's very few queries where people really put in the titles, like the publisher titles in, or the name of a, of a name of a games. That's another type of query, the so-called functional query. This is like think of this a verb and plus something, right? So crop photos, blog calls, view movies. For a lot of the like web-oriented folks out there, this is like how how what search queries should be about. But again, very very few people do that, and if they do, then they, they mostly do that around productivity apps. This type of query, the inspirational query, is actually already much much more important. It's right, really people type on like the, the I think usually the most popular query on any given day is best game. Free app, fun game, <laughs> like sexy photos. That's the type of thing, really, uh, what, what, what people are really putting in. But even more, and this is like really, really huge chunk, not only with us, like if you look, if you want like to hear it from, from other people, like Jeff from 148 apps is someone you can talk to. Like this is the large chunk of queries, like golf, diabetes, job interview, racing games, really think of it as like a, really, really well done genrification of, 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 of the categories you, you've seen so far today. And what you should be really putting into this app description is really like, what, is, what, is, what your game is really about and why it is fun. Of course, there's also the dedicated tools out there. And I've listed the four most popular ones according to my knowledge. And I talked to people from each of these tools. <laughs> To, as I created this presentation. And I also had someone who, who works here for a German uh, marketing agency uh, actually create most of the decks. Thanks, uh, Sebastian. So what's the ta takeaways, right? Discovery so far continues to get more difficult, right? T to, to me, really, the days of an ind independent developer for now are over. App search optimization can provide significant lift if you have really, really little budget. And with a couple of right keywords, you can go pretty much far. Thank you. This is us. Thank you very much. So um, we've been talking about how we make this stuff work. So anyone got any questions out there? Clearly, there's a lot to learn. There's a lot of uh, optimization about the way we use keywords to, to think about. Anyone going to volunteer for the first question? Stony silence. Come on, that, you've got to have a burning question out there. So you've all solved the discovery problem then, have you? Excellent. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll try away. So um, for me, I think you've kind of got it hit the nail on the head in terms of if I'm going to optimize everything about my game in order to be found, I've got to think about how I describe it, how I share it, what I talk about, what are the drivers for the audience to pull in, how does my icon make sense to a user. So it sounds to me it's just about being kind of pragmatic and completing and finishing the task of describing what I'm trying to do. Is it as simple as that or is there something more profound that we need to think about? Like, it's, I think it's a matter of how many people really do it well. Like, I think we're now at over 20,000 new apps every month for both Apple and Google. And, and really, true, truly discovered 100 apps, 150 max, within a whole month, like, with significant traffic. So, like, I think, like, I think there is actually not really that much information about this out there, right? People are complaining about some of the big publishers paying $7 for, 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 for installs, right? Um, and being crowded out, right? I think, I think in theory it sounds simple, but what I'm saying is like already with this, this keywords, right, and where we are with, with how Apple or Google works, it's, it's still super, super simple early days. I think that's fair, and I think um, what I also find interesting is that we're, we're still in an era of disruption. And I think it goes back to the conversation we were having before the break and before you started when you know, we, the gentleman in the back there, we were talking about app stores and, and where do we place the, the blame? Is that the right word or, or the question? I think blame's unfair, but there is a question about how these stores and discovery mechanisms work. 
And I also think that we're going to see more disruption happening by going outside of the App Store itself. And, but that doesn't deny the fact that we still need to do the optimization of how we create our experience. Um, like, like when, when Apple bought Chomp, right, they actually bought some of the technology we displayed today. So we're, 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 we're expecting the app stores to change this year. Like, in, like for, for publishers of books, Amazon already ha has some of the technology, right? Google talks a, a, a lot about uh, Google Plus and other third signals of popularity because they know that, that the ratings are really not a way, the way to go, right? So I think there we'll, we'll see significant movement from the big players this year. I think that's fair. And I also, when I, I have questions over the particular implementation, you know, when they, when they use job, only because I have that experience of, of what it was like in the early days of being an operator and, and seeing the benefit of changing the way that you display things. So for example, I found that you actually lost revenue by having a top 10 chart. You know, and that sounds sort of heretic, heretical. But we had less revenue when, somebody, when I was away on holiday. Someone tried putting a top 10 chart in. I nearly, got them, I nearly fired them for doing it because we, had a, we halved our revenue overnight when that happened. Actually, I think it was worse than half. You know, top 10 charts are great as long as you're presenting what's new because it's showing people new content all the time. You see, like, I'm more a little bit of a geek, so, right, I remember, like, the mobile web in the 90s, right, your OL dial-up, and we had this, like, portal situation, and this is what you really described. Yeah. And then, like, one, you know, one, once, once we hit one million websites, right, <laughs> Google came in and, and enabled the long tail. Like, there's multiple players, not only us, trying to figure this out. And, and, and I think we have a good shot as an industry to, to contribute to the solution. And I think it's also important to think about the other communication methods we've got. So I, I think it was News who uh, did a presentation at Mobile Games Forum in London uh, in January, and they were looking at the proportion of smartphone users that remembered an ad. And it was huge. It was something like 36% of people remembered ads inside games. And we're actually incredibly privileged in the mobile world that we have an audience that is aware of the content, that's actively involved in purchasing content, and is also something we can communicate to, whether it's through you know, the sort of cross-promotion networks or ad networks or, or maybe through something like EveryPlay with the video stuff. There's a whole bunch of things we can do. If you're selling a fridge or a packet of crisps, your whole mechanism to communicate to your audience is up in the air because we can't just go to the correct TV channel and spend a whole bunch of money and be guaranteed of getting to the right audience. So in some ways, I wonder if we're being a bit too um, belligerent, if you like, you know, kind of, we're complaining too much. The app stores have given us this wonderful experience that we can be found with. Uh, am I, am I, are we being too unfair on the app stores? I don't know, like, you see, like, like I'm, I'm a maker of things myself, right? <laughs> and, and if I make something, I, I put heart into it, and, and I want it to be seen and, and, and appreciate it, right? So I think like developer anger is always justified <laughs> because they're the makers and they are right. Um, um, like what I'm trying to say is I think like we're on the brink of the industry getting really 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 better at this, and and what it will really mean is that we will be enable new type of app economies, right? We'll be talking about you know the key, key games for kids, right, and key music instruments, right? We for example, in, in when we see like queries for music instruments, it's really like, and there's millions of these queries. It's like parents uh, searching for, you know, not, not wanting to buy a piano or a flute to their kids, but really they, these kids already have a phone and then you want, you, you're giving them these instruments for, for, for these phones. So all these things are happening, I think, and we as an industry are challenged just to give it a better platform to, to, to happen. I mean, I'd go a little bit further. I think actually, it, one way of looking at it is we wouldn't have this opportunity that freemium games have if the app stores could deliver the discovery level that we are asking for. And actually, I'm glad in some ways that we can do that because it allows us to try and make the decision to make you know, spending in a game happen inside the gameplay rather than at the app store. So there's a kind of freaky way, of, you know, kind of quirky way of thinking about it. So with all these problems, I think comes opportunities. 
So, last chance for a question? Any volunteers? This is the only session I haven't had a question from. I feel let down by you guys. No, no, it's okay. So, anyway, thank you, thank you very much thank for that. Much. Um, all good stuff. <laughs> <laughs>